Okay, welcome to chapter 10. Chapter 10 is all about inheritance. And no, this has got nothing to do with some rich relative uh, leaving money in their will. Inheritance is a really cool technique. Let, let's consider this. Let's say that you're writing an application and your buddy over in the next cube has written a class that is almost exactly what you want. All it takes is just a maybe a few little tweaks to it and you could use it with no trouble at all. Well, without inheritance, what you would have to do is you'd have to ask them for the source code. They would give you the source code and then you would go in there and edit, you know, add, delete, and make changes as you see fit. Well, inheritance will allow you to make those changes without having to mess with the original. What it basically means is uh, if there's a, already a class out there that's really, really close to what you want, you just inherit from that and then add the property that you want or change this method or add a field variable or whatever it is you think needs to be done. So it's all about very quickly making small tweaks to something. And the cool part about inheritance is I don't actually have to have the source code to be able to do that. I mean, I could take a built-in thing that, Java, that comes with Java. Uh, for example, I don't know, the scanner class. Let's say, you know, I need to make, I need to write something that's kind of similar to a scanner class. Uh, but, um, you know, I need that. And so you think, oh, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just start one from scratch. Wow, that's a heck of a lot of work. I'll, if all you needed was to add uh, an extra thing in there that says next char, if that's all you needed, well, then inheritance would be a much better idea because I don't have to have a source code. All I have to do is just be able to inherit for something and then add whatever I want. Okay. So there's four pillars of object-oriented programming, four pillars of OOP. Um, so I, I attach little catchphrases to each one of these things. Uh, that's just me. So uh, the first one we ever talked about was abstraction. Abstraction basically means that um, I don't need to know how something works to be able to, to operate it. Like, you don't need to know how an internal combustion engine works to be able to drive a car. So the catchphrase is, don't bother me with details. The next one was encapsulization. Encapsulization basically has two parts. One is you break big things into small things, and then you bundle all of the related things, all the meth all the actions and all the nouns together. And so that one I call divide and conquer. And the third one is inheritance. And this one basically is don't reinvent the wheel. I mean, if there's already one out there that's pretty doggone close, well, for goodness sakes, use that rather than starting over from scratch. Okay, the fourth one, yeah, you have to wait for that one. It's coming, it's coming later in this chapter. Okay, on page 611, they talk about <clears throat> the idea of generalization versus specialization. I'm not certain how helpful the little diagram is, but <clears throat> if someone wrote an insect class, and then you say, oh, but wait, I want a grasshopper class or I want a honeybee class. You wouldn't have to start from scratch. You could just start, you know, your starting location, so to speak, for writing this code would be to start with insect because the insect already has an awful lot of stuff in it. All you need to do is talk to the specialization. In other words, the honeybee is a specialized insect and the grasshopper is a specialized insect. So, and, and then you have the, the is a, relationship. A honeybee is an insect. A grasshopper is an insect. So the, the is a kind of a thing, eh, kind of corny. What basically means is, you know, a specialization class is a class that's related to the general class. And so the example they use in the book, it's not bad, is a poodle is a type of dog. Okay, cool. So uh, the term called a super class, sometimes called the base class. So in our case, a super class is dog. And then the specialized thing called a sub class. And you can kind of sort of see from this diagram, you know, super is above, you know, and, and sub is below. So I cut them a little bit slack here. A subclass is the poodle. Got it? <clears throat> so. In other languages, they call this the uh, the base class, being um, the super class, and then the derived, and then the other is called the derived class. Okay. 
So I'm going to do an example using an employee class. Somebody gave me an employee class that was really, 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 really close, but it didn't exactly do everything I wanted to do. So <clears throat> let's go take a peek. So I've already got an employee class out here. Let's just take a peek at it really quick. All right. So <clears throat> here's an employee. He's got minimum hours and maximum hours. All this is designed to pre prevent input validation issues. And um, so this is about what we had before. We had this, this default constructor. Remember that? And then we have a parameterized constructor. And then I call the parameter constructor first. Why do I have to do that first? Uh, because this command inside a constructor has to be the first line. <clears throat> and then I watch these things through the setters and then the normal kind of things here. I do have some input validation stuff. <clears throat> and then some methods. So here's the thing about calculating pay. All I do is take the rate and times the, the hours. But to tell you the truth, that's probably not going to work if, if um, employees are getting overtime. So I need to make a tweak to this employee class so that it will work with calculating overtime. Okay, so it's just a, a very small tweak. Makes sense? Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back to here and let's build this one. First, I'm going to build the first one, you know, the real one. So this is employee, I'm going to call him imp0, is equal to new employee. <clears throat> and um, let's see what the parameters are for the constructor here, because I don't really remember. <clears throat> okay, so it's first name, last name, and position. So first name is Bob, last name is Smith, and his position is, I don't know, plumber. Okay, so we built us an employee. Let's check it out to make sure it works, okay? Um, so to do this, I'm gonna have to, before I can calculate their pay, I'm gonna have to go in and add the, the p missing pieces. Hey, not necessarily, let's try this. <clears throat> let's see if our input validation our secondary input validation, so-called sanity checking. Let's see if that works. So do print ln, and I'm just going to say imp1.0 calc pay. Okay. Dang it. Well, let's see if it works. And it comes up and says value for rate is not set. So it, the Sanity checking thing did work. So I'm gonna have to go in here and say, uh, imp zero dot, uh, let's do set uh, hours. And uh, let's make it 42. And then we'll do imp dot zero set the, the rate he gets paid. Let's make it 10, yikes, what the heck happened there? Good Lord. Let's make it 10 so it's easy to calculate in our head what the what the pay would be, right? Okay, let's try this again. And so it's fairly obvious this guy is not getting overtime. So I need to create another type of an employee, one that does have overtime. Now, um, it's called non-exempt. I know, it, these, are, these are crazy terms. If you're ever in HR, the Fair Labor Standards Act, FL, the non-exempt means that you do get overtime. I know, it's uh, it's it's crazy, just bear with me. So what I'm gonna do is instead of altering this guy, I'm gonna inherit from it. So I'm gonna create me a brand new guy. So I'm gonna go here and say new Java class and I'm gonna call this employee non-exempt. All right, and then I'm gonna use this really cool thing right here. <clears throat> that says extends. In other words, I'm starting with an employee class. That's it. I mean, I have essentially completed the task. No, not really. Um, <clears throat> this would be a good, good time to talk about what does and does not get inherited. Um, so, 
the in this case the uh, it, this is the subclass in other words a specialized version of an employee that kind of makes sense okay good <clears throat> if I go over here and see this little button way way over here says show inherited members and I can see all sorts of stuff in here I mean I basically get to see all of the all of the the, the stuff from the original employee class so that's pretty cool so <clears throat> let's talk about the rules one is that a class can only uh, be derived from a single super class. In other words, I can't say extends in employee comma something else. So that, that's one of the rules. In other words, there's no, no such thing as called multiple inheritance. You only inherit from insect. You don't ever inherit from insect and mammal. Okay, so what does not get inherited that's a, a very good question if you if, <clears throat> if you know anything at all about how i write quizzes this is you sh your ears should perk up when i ask you a question during the lecture so let's go over here and look one of the things you can do is one of the things it shows is if i show the fully qualified name well that's not really that's not really helpful um these things are kind of grayed out, okay? Kind of, you can kind of see, but they're kind of subdued a little bit. All except for non employee non-exempt. That one's not subdued. Well, what's going on there? Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> Everything gets inherited to include things that you can't, this is weird. Do private field variables get inherited? Yes. Can you see them? No. Those are two separate questions. One is, do they get inherited? Yes. Can you see them from inside employee exempt? No. Okay. So that's one thing. And what is the only thing in this list that is not, uh, not subdued? It's the constructor. So I'm going to have to build my own constructor here. So here we go. You remember how constructors work. It's, you know, public without a return type. Um, employee non-exempt and then I'm going to say string first name string last name string position <clears throat> now all I really want to do is pass the, the parameters here off to my other guy because I don't really care right so how do you talk to the other class so I, I, I don't want to instead of passing off to you know normally this is where we would have washing them through the properties so we don't have any properties so I want to wash them through not our properties but the properties of the base class so basically all you have to do <clears throat> is just do super dot and then set first name and then super set last name and then super set position okay so now we have created a constructor that works cool all right, we're kind of sort of coming up on the 15-minute mark, so let's just go ahead and pause it now, and then we'll continue this in just a second.